I ended up like having uh, an accidental Jack Black movie marathon last weekend. I love Jack Black so much. Um, so what happened was um, I just, in, in an algorithm on Netflix moment, I was looking for something to watch and skipping right past Devil in Ohio, oh. I saw that it was like, would you like to watch this again? School of Rock. I would like to watch that again, Netflix. And lo and behold, it's still a five star movie. It's just it, School of Rock is just a great big warm hug of a movie. Yeah, it's perfect. Uh, it's still it still absolutely slaps. It's still very very funny. Um, it is the like it it is clear that the role was written by Mike White for Jack Black um, because no, it's one of those no other human being on earth could have done that role. It is it, it, the thing that blows my mind every time that I keep forgetting um, is that it's a Richard Linklater film. Yeah. Yeah, when you see that intro in it, like Richard Linklater, because I saw this in the cinema, like, so I, I've got nothing but love for this movie. And I saw the Richard Linklater thing come up at the start, and I'm like, really? I had no idea that it, w- it would be by him, but uh, apparently he just. So, first of all, um, Mike White wrote it, who, aka Ned Schneebly. Do you know? He's like Jack Black's neighbour, or he was at the time. He lived next yeah. door for him. He's just like, hey, Jack Black, I live next door for him. He's really funny. So, if I wanted to get him a script, I could just write it and put it, put it for his mailbox. That's exactly yeah. what happened. And then, yeah, Richard, Richard Linglayer apparently just saw the script and he's like, oh man, this, uh, this seems like a really great movie. Someone should do this. And then he was like, you know what? I'll do this. Because he doesn't normally direct like completely out of the blue stuff like this. So yeah, it's just really cool. Yeah. And he, he gives it a sense of like, there's like a sort of like a gritty coolness that you get in Richard Linklater. And, and, an, and an, an earnesty. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It feels grounded. Like obviously towards yeah. the end, it gets a little, a little bit like, yeah, there's there's yeah. no way. the it's, it, He keeps it grounded, but it is ridiculous yeah like there's no way the parents would be too happy about all of the stuff going on at the end and just watch the gig probably yeah. but you know for the vast majority of you like you could probably believe that this might happen uh maybe not in 2022 but you know maybe 20 30 yeah. years ago potentially sorry you tell me school of rock or pick of destiny oh absolutely well, grounded that, in reality <laughs> we'll get to that in a moment um <laughs> Because I, I also watched, and I'm just looking at Letterbox here, and I forgot to, to put it in on my ratings, and I must do later. Uh, I rewatched Orange County. Love it. Which is a really underrated one in the Jack Black canon. Speaking of um, um, parallels to so other things we've been watching recently, Niles' second wife, Mel, <laughs> plays Jack Black's love interest in, uh, in yeah. Orange County, and it is such a throw off because she is 180 degrees away from who Mel is as a character. Yeah. It's a it's a great two hander with Jack Black and uh, uh, Colin Hanks. Yeah, uh, that's a really good little movie. I watched uh, in what may blow some people's minds for the first time in my life. Tropic Thunder. What? Never seen that before. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, never seen Holy it before. Shit. Which is wild because like I love everyone in it. Yeah. And I just ne- it's one of those I just never got round to it. Um, Did you enjoy I was, it? I was, well, one of these days. Yeah. I'd say I, if I had seen it at the time, I'd have more nostalgia for it, and it would have like gotten a higher, higher rating. I went three and a half. I want to say, end. Jack, did I see that in the cinema with you? It's very possible. Yeah, I, I feel I, like we did. Yeah, it it is neither my favorite Jack Black nor my favorite Ben Stiller, um, but those are particularly high can, bars. Can I just say you know? as well? It's annoying because everything he does is good, but Tom Cruise is fucking hilarious in that movie. Tom Cruise is great in yeah. it. Yeah. And is in, like, for people talk about, like, uh, you know, uh, it being an all-timer cameo, I wasn't prepared for just how much of that movie he's in. Yep. Like, he's in a lot of that movie. Yep. Like, and the- and what, what I also wasn't prepared for is that his assistant is Bill Hader. Yeah, his assistant's Bill Hader. Like, the guy he's always on the phone to is Matthew McConaughey, who for some reason yep. turns up at the end of the movie and throws him a TiVo box. Yeah. Do you want to now spend 45 minutes doing uh, Robert Downey Jr. discourse on that film? Uh, let's not do that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, like it was a discourse so of thi- itself. So the thing is, it, like it, about that, like again, without making it a podcast about that, is that because he is doing a conceited Hollywood actor who thinks he deserves a role like that, and it, like it is a subplot about you know the the black guy that's with them being really fucked off that they gave the role to somebody who wasn't appropriate for it instead of an actual black actor with talent. Uh, I kind of like that bit of it. I it was actually a more I thought that was one of the things that really held me back from watching it. I was like, oh, the more time goes on, the more I don't like this. Um. 
But I think it, I, Now if I was making the movie Would I have done it? Almost certainly not Would he have done it again Considering um, it came out The same year as the first Iron Man I, movie? No I, Weirdly I have way less of a problem With that than I do The amount of times They uh, They do ableist humour in it um, I don't even remember with that the, Oh Do you not remember that uh, Simple Jack? Oh yes Oh Oh God, oh yeah and the amount of times they use uh, a certain r slur yeah the thing is yeah. again it's trying to d- that's what that's way more offensive because they're <laughs> yeah. not doing that as they're not doing that as oh look we're doing a subversive commentary on how people use that sort of stuff it's like no they're just that's that, that's actually the joke well no i think that they are a little bit trying to do it but they don't do it they do it yeah, so heavy-handedly like, one of the lines that everyone quoted about that movie, one of the big gags that everyone quoted at the time is, you know, you never go full yeah. R slur. Um, so it's not in the same way that the, like, it's not, I don't see it in the same way that I do the the uh, the blackface at all. Is it, is um, it worse yeah, is the fact that the person that says that is Robert Downey Jr. while they're yes, blackface? Yeah, you know, it just compounds the issue that it is Robert Downey Jr. that says it. Um, it's and like then while finally, he was standing on an LGBTQ flag or something at yeah, the same time. Yeah. You literally couldn't get more offensive than that. And, and then I, I rounded it off with uh, Pick a Destiny, um, which I have such a soft spot for because I love Tenacious D so much. But... Uh, you know, we talked about cameos there a few minutes ago. Uh, big shout out to uh, all time weirdo cameo Tim Robbins in that movie. Yeah, that is a very. Do you know what they pick a destiny? Obviously, there's the podcast. How did this get made? And they cover terrible films. But pick of destiny is such a how did this get made? Because it came like five years after the peak of Tenacious D when like they were at yeah. their most, you know, renowned when that first album come yeah. out and, yeah. and, and tribute was all over the TV and stuff. If the, if the movie had come out like a year after that, it probably would have done like a good sort of 40, 50 million dollars yeah. at the box office. But I think it did like less than 10. I mean, in fairness, yeah. like yeah. tribute was still being played heavily on rotation on Kerrang and whatnot. Five years later, they, probably still it, is today. But, it was, but, but, but also like the problem the was that like, I got it. Yeah. 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 He he had the like he had the comet like uh, the comedy fans, but like Jack didn't have the Hollywood juice to get that movie made when the first album came out. True, that he later would, you know. Um, I think it came out the but, did it come out the same year as the holiday or like the year after? <laughs> I just mm. just imagine like someone like someone and their mum like sitting down and watching the holiday and being like, oh, that Jack Black, he's in another movie about this. <laughs> well, about like, him and his he would have he would have done like Shallow Hal by then, maybe. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, that, oh, Shallow Hal was way yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. Shallow Hal talking like, about offensive movie, Shallow Hal. Jesus Christ. Oh yeah. I mean, aw- yeah, yeah. awful. I mean, a lot of the Farrelly brothers canon. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't it doesn't exactly age. It ages like milk. When, when people talk about their favourite openings to films ever, by the way, I always, always think of the first number of this Tenacious D movie, Kickapoo. Oh, Kickapoo? Yeah, yeah, because it has Ronnie James Dio and Meatloaf in, who we've now, now both sadly lost, and they are... Yeah fucking singing their guts out in that like they they are not phoning it in their appearances they are giving it everything they've got and it is so so cool it's two things i constantly forget about the tenacious d canon both the movie um and the hbo series which people should look up the hbo series from like um before even the first tenacious d album came out i think i know where you're gonna go with this fabulous is that I constantly forget that the club MC (laughs) where they play is Paul F. Tompkins. Hardcore. And that the um, the In Tenacious D universe terrible comedian that's their support act in the show and when you go see them on tour he's often their support act Neil Hamburger is Greg Turkington of On Cinema fame. Uh, a part of the the Tim and Eric universe um, I, that fucking melted me. And just one of the most hideously awful slash offensive comedians as well, Hamburger. Oh, a hundred percent. I literally I remember two or three of his jokes from when I saw Tenacious D live, and I will not, as long as I live, repeat any. No, of them. I mean you can't even quote the jokes without feeling like you're now part of the joke, like you yeah. came up with it or something. Yeah. 